What a wild week we have just had. One of the most disturbing documentaries released exposing the sick things that happen in Hollywood. The only person on Earth to have the Neuralink brain chip just recorded his first ever demonstration. And he said that he's run into some issues. And my editor's wife is having a baby as we speak. So if halfway through this video, the editing turns real shit, just know that I took over. <laughs> All of that and more, so let's get cracking. Okay, let's kick this week's recap off with a bit of a curveball because I didn't expect this either. June 2 released and, and people love it, okay? But the problem is, is that they released a popcorn bucket that some people love so much more. I mean, uh, I don't know what to tell you apart from uh, people are not using this bucket for popcorn. <laughs> I don't know how humanity got here, but we're here now. In fact, it turns out that these buckets are so compelling, if that's the word you want to use, that they sold out everywhere, leading them to start reselling for hundreds of dollars, with some even labeling them as damaged or used and it comes without lotion. <laughs> Honestly, I had to take an internet detox after researching this. I feel stained. Moving on, happily. Okay, warning, I'm just gonna crack out all of the wacky shit that's happened this week first. Just get out the way, so prepare yourself. This woman bit a man's thumb off after she delivered his pizza to the wrong address. Ha, <laughs> Stephen Jenkins, oh my God, from the UK, ordered a pizza from Deliveroo to his home, but Jennifer Rocha from Brazil arrived to the wrong address further down his street. When Stephen went out to go and collect his food, he forgot to bring his phone. And because of that, an argument erupted regarding the delivery code that he was supposed to produce. One thing led to another and he raised his hand to Jennifer's motorcycle helmet and she bit his thumb off. I mean, I don't really understand the mechanics of like why his hand was there to get the opportunity to bite it, but I'm just reading what it's telling me. He started shaking her helmet to try and get her off. But by the time he did, his thumb was severed clean off. I mean, I don't know how powerful your bite has to be to crunch through bone, but even getting a chicken bone, it's, it's pretty tough. He was quickly rushed to hospital where he underwent an 11 hour operation, which saw a part of his big toe surgically sewn onto the stump of his missing thumb. And the worst part about all of this is that because he's a plumber, he's been left permanently disabled and he can't work. And on top of this, he can't sue Deliveroo because she wasn't an employee and was using her friend's account as a substitute driver. <sighs> That's a whole series of very unfortunate events. This week in court, Jennifer pled guilty to grievous bodily harm without intent. Moving on. Okay, we are now at the point where Alex is officially having his baby and he's just sent me over all of this. So from this point forth, I will be taking over the editing. Now I want to make one thing very clear right now. I do know how to edit my videos. Okay, Alex is only a recent addition to the team. I've been carrying this before him, but I don't really know how to edit on Final Cut. <laughs> so enjoy the video. It'll only be one week and if I see one fucking comment. Oh my God, this one is hilarious. Because we also found out this week that despite almost every Western brand pulling out of Russia, a creator named Tom posted a video showing that you can still pretty much buy all of them at reseller stores. Russians now just buy their Nike products at NSP, their iPhones, Macs, and even Vision Pros at Restore, their Lego at Cube World, which actually, uh, fun fact, existed before the war. McDonald's got rebranded to just the letter M and still uses as you can see, the same machinery. And Tom says it's still just as popular. KFC was turned into row sticks. People now buy their Timberland boots at Bootwood, their Starbucks coffee at Stars Coffee, their Pandora at Pan Club, and their Zara clothing in the same exact store. It's just now called mug. And if you're wondering how the hell is this possible? Well, it's not that these brands are just not listening to sanctions and still selling hush hush sneaky little iPhones. It's actually that retailers in Russia that no longer have the consent by the copyright holder to sell their products are bypassing these sanctions by using what's called parallel imports. Now this consists of purchasing large quantities of these brands products from small foreign companies in countries next to Russia and then just importing them on in. And if you're wondering if these massive brands 
Americans know that they're still indirectly selling to Russia. Large orders from small, tiny little companies that happen to be right next to Russia doesn't seem sus at all. I'm sure they don't know a thing. Moving on. Okay, this is some news. I'm not gonna lie. I've been waiting since 2021 to talk about. And three years later, I'm here and I'm finally able to talk about the moment because it's arrived. The first person on Earth to have the Neuralink chip inserted in their brain has just showed off whether or not it is working as advertised. I mean, if that doesn't drop your jaw to your ankles to hear, then you must not know what Neuralink really is. I mean, just the process alone of this getting into your brain is scary enough. They literally have to cut a little segment of your skull and remove it. And then you have to put your trust into a seven foot robot, which carries out the procedure instead of a human. The reason for this is because the 64 threads that they push into your brain are 1 14th the size of a human hair. That's hard to even comprehend. One hair, one fourteenth, crazy. And that makes them far too small for a human to maneuver because if they're off by even the tiniest margin, you could very easily hit a blood vessel in your brain and you could do some real goddamn damage. But if you make it through the first stage, you will now have the possibility to directly connect to the devices that we use all day, like your cell phone, laptop, TV, and perhaps one day, even gaming consoles and the metaverse, all without even touching them. I mean, in a conversation and you wanna quickly Google something, no need to whip out your phone and use the old Stone Age thumbs. You now just do it instantly with your brain. And on Joe Rogan, Elon even said that one day you'll be able to connect your chips to another person's chip and speak to them telepathically. Oh my God. However, before all of that, you know, Neuralink has said that they first intend on aiming to cure conditions like obesity, autism, depression, schizophrenia, and even allow paralyzed individuals to walk again. This is literally the start of changing humanity as a species and turning them in some other direction we don't even know. Now, the actual surgery happened last month and there were no details about who the person was and whether or not the device is actually working as advertised. But this week, we got most of our questions answered when the only person on earth to have this finally spoke to the world. I mean, we don't realize it yet, but I genuinely believe that we're gonna look back on this moment, just like similar to the first time a man walked on the moon. I mean, we all remember the name Neil Armstrong, but will you remember the name of the world's first cyborg, Nolan Arba? I'm actually not sure if that's how you pronounce it. Imagine that, all of that build up and I, <laughs> I can't pronounce his name right. Now, the 29 year old who was paralyzed from the shoulders down after a freak diving accident is now telekinetic, meaning that everything he now does on his Apple Macintosh is controlled by his mind. As you can see, he demonstrates playing chess saying, before this, I had to use a mouse stick, but now if you see the cursor moving around the screen, that's all me. He said the first day that they let him use it by himself, he stayed up all night playing Civilization VI, which would have been impossible for him before. Now, here's where things get interesting because he did want to let people know that it's not perfect and he has run into some issues, although he didn't, which I really wanted him to, go into the specifications of what those issues were. Because if it was an unskippable 30 second ad, I need to know now so I can plan the riots. Also, one thing which I thought would have been a bigger issue highlighted was that you actually have to charge this thing. I didn't even think about that. Just imagine charging your head at night. But for anyone that is still at this point watching and thinking, you know what? I would consider doing human trials. His advice is that there's nothing to be scared of and he's had no cognitive impairments and it has already changed his life and he believes it will soon change the world. <sighs> it's crazy that this day has actually come. So with all of that being heard, the question I have for you is, will you at some point get this chip or not. Moving on. Now, if you thought that story was wild, I've actually saved the most insane news for last. This week, Hollywood was rocked by a bombshell new documentary called Quiet on Set, which uncovers the shocking behavior of writers, producers, and staff on children's Nickelodeon TV shows. And honestly, this gets dark. Now, while a whole bunch of genuinely shocking claims were made that you could talk about for hours, one name 
in particular was continuously dropped by people now speaking out, and that name is Dan Schneider. He was the producer for some of Nickelodeon's biggest TV shows in the 90s and 2000s like R. Carly, Drake and Josh, The Amanda Show, and the list goes on. I mean, if you're older than about, you know, 23, you've probably watched some of the stuff that this man has made. I actually didn't, so a lot of these scenes that I'm about to show you, I saw for the first time this week, and uh... I genuinely feel sorry for the people who grew up watching this because what you're gonna see it probably will ruin your childhood. Anyway, for years, Dan has been accused of being a creep, to put it lightly. But in this documentary, they came with receipts. Former co-workers accused him of years and years of abuse, inappropriate behavior on set, like asking for massages, and even writing wildly suggestive jokes into the shows that children would then later have to act out. One thing, for example, was that people who worked with him said that he had a massive foot fetish. Ugh. And when you hear that before watching some of these scenes, you see it with a whole different perspective. Have you ever said something, like a sentence, and thought to yourself, wow, like, I bet nobody else on earth has ever said those exact words that I just said. Oh man, my uvula got stuck between that hamster's toes. That could never happen, because your uvula is that swingy thing in the back of your throat right here. I'm soaking wet! Because the ocean is even more wet than even the wettest person in the world. Have you ever tried to get your whole big toe in your mouth? Check this out. Sometimes I wonder if you can get juice from a potato. Mmm, I'm thirsty! Yeah, pretty messed up. One of the shows, Sam and Kat, even put out a tweet in 2013 asking their viewers, which of course are children, right on the bottom of your foot, take a picture and post it online with the hashtag Sam and Cat Saturday. Uh, who approved?